58% of the normal curve. All right, that would go from uh, uh, minus a standard deviation to plus a standard deviation. We can also say about 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So let's take a look at that in terms of a normal curve. Here's our standard normal, normal curve here. If we go, uh, here's the mean right here. If we go over one standard deviation, or up one standard deviation, or if we go back two standard deviations, or up two standard deviations, we're saying here that this area that's trapped in between, right there, takes up about 95% of the whole normal curve. <clears throat> and then finally, um, if you take a look at the uh, area that was within three standard deviations of the mean, well, that's about the whole normal curve, 99.7% of it. That rule was called the empirical rule that we were just looking at there. And it's a way we can we can kind of estimate probabilities quickly. We'll find some more. We'll talk about some more exact ways in just a minute here. All right. So let's take a look at an example and see uh, how we can work with these uh, standard uh, values, the z scores, so to speak. It says the mean and standard deviation of the annual snowfall in the neighboring communities of Nashbrook and Hampton are shown in the table. Uh, in part A, it says last year. Nashbrook received 35.1 inches of snow, and Hampton received 40.6 inches. Compute the z-score for each one. And then graph them on the normal curve, and then answer the question, relative to the rest of the years, which community received less snow? So what are we saying here? Uh, as time went by, Nashbrook received 36 inches of snow with a standard deviation of 1.5. For Hampton, it was 41 inches with a smaller standard deviation of 0.8. So let's go ahead and solve this now. So in part A, first uh, we know that for Nashbrook, the mean is 36 inches and the standard deviation is 1.5 inches and last year they received x equals 35.1 inches of snow now what we want to do is to convert this to a z-score and that'll tell us how many standard deviations above or below the mean that this amount of snowfall was. Okay, so remember it's x minus mu over sigma. x is 35.1 in this case, minus mu, which is 36, divided by sigma, 1.5. So let's go ahead and compute that now and see what we get. So we'll have to put in parentheses um, 35.1 minus 36. There's our numerator. Since we have two terms in it, we have to put it in parentheses, divided by 1.5. And so it looks like we get negative 0.6. So it looks like um, in that year, uh, the uh, snowfall for, Ham for Nashbrook pardon me, is 0.6 standard deviations below the mean. They had a little bit le less snow than, than uh, they usually did. Now for Hampton, the mean is 41 inches, and the standard deviation we said was 0.8 inches. And now we want to know what happens that year they had 40.6 inches of snow. So here, z is going to be 40.6, the x value, minus the mean, 41 divided by the standard deviation of 0.8. So you can go ahead and compute that. Yeah, let me tell you what you end up with. You end up with um, uh, negative 0.5. Again, a little bit less than what they usually got.
So let's go ahead and graph this now on the standard normal curve. <clears throat> when you make one of these curves, you have to do them in three segments. First, you have this segment here that goes up, and it kind of bows up as it goes along. Then there's this middle segment where it bows down, and then the third where it bows up again but is decreasing. And those points where we change there is exactly one standard deviation away from the mean. So this would be negative 1, and this would be 1 right here. That's how we always know when we graph these things. Now, we said for, um, uh, for Nashbrook, this, the z-score was negative 0.6, and that's Nashbrook. And then for Hampton, it was negative 0.5. right there so it looks like uh, when you compare the two uh, relative to the other years Nashbrook had uh, less snow as compared to Hampton again compared to the other years because we're standardizing this uh, with the mean the population mean and the standard deviation all right, now let's talk about how we find we want to find areas under the standard normal curve. So to compute these, what we want to use is the standard normal table. And the reason being is you really kind of need uh, calculus to be able to figure out um, the area under a curve. And since we, know we, we don't do that in this kind of course, we, we use a table of values. Let me show you what that looks like. There it is right there. And it's the standard normal table. You'll find it in Appendix C in the back of the text. And notice we have Z uh, scores written down the left-hand column and across the top row. So when we, when we look at these, we want to, uh, when we look up these areas, that's what's in the middle of the table, uh, we want to look up the Z score accurate to tenths place down the left hand column and then accurate to hundreds place across the top row and when where they intersect is the corresponding probability value so for our table think of it this way here's our standard normal curve here's some z score what that what that standard normal table gives us is the value from 0 up to some z-score. All right, so that's our table value. It gives us a value from 0 up to some z-score. And having that piece of information, along with the properties of symmetry uh, and uh, the area under the curve being 1, the area under half the curve being 1 half, uh, we can compute any probability that we want to. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. <coughs> in, in our second example, let's find the shaded area using um, the standard normal, uh, the standard table here that we have from the back of the book. All right, so in, in, in number 10 here, we want to find the area trapped in between uh, 1.08 and 2.30. All right, so let's get going on that now. So in number 10, 